So these are just three tried and true sort of problem solving approaches, but these are by no means all of the ways that we go about solving our problems. And your homework assignment this week is going to involve going out and finding some more because there are more than just these. The next one that we're going to be talking about is called the 13 eyes. This one is specifically geared towards problem solving when it comes to computer programming. These 13 eyes are related to computer debugging or program debugging, but I think that, that uh, some or many of these can actually be applied to problems in general. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to see if we can apply these 13 eyes to a problem that you have chosen and see if we can find out um, if it actually will work in a real world environment and not just in computer programming. They're called the 13 eyes because they each begin with the word I will and there are 13 of them. And the first is I will own the problem. This says that even if you didn't cause it, if you have found it, I will own the problem means that I will take responsibility for it. I'm not going to say it's not my fault, I didn't do it, therefore I'm just going to ignore it. You own the problem and accept the responsibility to try and find a solution for it. The vast majority of the time, of course, in your own program, when you're writing your own code, you are the reason why it's occurring. And so owning the problem is not very difficult. But there are other problems that we encounter that I didn't cause, but yet I need to be the solution to. So what I would like you to do is to write down a paragraph or so accepting responsibility. I want you to write down a pledge to accept responsibility for this particular problem. The second I will is I will remain calm and remember the mental game of debugging. It can be amazingly frustrating trying to debug your code. So it's important that we stay calm and stay rational and remember that debugging is all about mental patience and skill. You know Thomas Edison. He actually had a practice or he believed that the subconscious mind contained information that the conscious mind could not access. And so he had a habit when he had a problem that he couldn't solve of putting a ball bearing in his hand and sitting down in a chair for a nap. And as he fell asleep, his hand would relax and the ball bearing would fall out of his hand onto the floor and it would startle him awake. And when he woke up, he would generally have the solution to the problem that he had thought about as he was going to sleep. And this worked so well for him that he encouraged, encouraged people around him to do the same thing. Because if you can clear your mind and stay calm, generally your mind can find a solution to the problem. Makes me think of the video clip that we watched about Apollo 13 as the men are in the lunar module and they're having an argument about whether or not they checked the gauges before they stirred the tank. The captain or the commander says, we will not fight with one another. We're going to fight the problem, not one another. And that is what it means to remain calm and remember the mental game of debugging. So what I want you to do is to write down some techniques that you could use to remain calm in the middle of the turbulence and the storm that could be considered computer programming or better yet, being faced with the problem that you're encountering now. The third I will is I will use the scientific method and problem solving approaches. We've already talked about three of them and you're going to be researching at least three more. And so you have some problem solving techniques at the ready. And so the third I will says that I will use those problem solving approaches that I have studied. Instead of just running around like a chicken with my head cut off, I'm going to apply some logic and reasoning to see if I can figure out what's going wrong and how to fix it. So what I'd like you to do is to pick one of the three, the straw man argument, the rule of thumb, or following a procedure, and I'd like, to, I'd like you to apply it to the problem that you have chosen. The next one is, I will read the manual. I know that the vast majority of us will never read the user's manual for our cell phone. But there is a very good chance if you're encountering a program in your software that the person who wrote and created and thought up and published your programming language probably knows more about it than you do. And so reference material and users manuals and online resources are an excellent place to go to try to get help when you are encountering a problem. I am a huge proponent of restaurants material. That's why I do all of my quizzes and exams, open book and open notes. Even the math class that I teach is open book, open notes, because 
To me, it's not important that you have memorized some formula. It's much more important that you know how to apply the formula. Because even if you have it written down in a three by five inch cheat sheet, if you don't know how to use it, you're not, it's not gonna be any good to you. And so reading the manual and having access to reference material instead of trying to remember or memorize everything, there is value in re reference and resource material. So what I'd like you to do is, I want you to search online and see if there is anybody who's written a document or a paper or done a study or a blog post or for that matter, an owner's manual on the problem that you are currently facing. And maybe, just maybe, they might give valuable information to you. Rule number five is, I will make it fail. I know this sounds um, opposite of everything inside of you trying to make it fail, but unless I can duplicate or repeat the problem that I'm having in my software program, I have no idea where to even begin looking for it. And so when the user, the end user calls me up on the phone and says, it's doing this and I just can't get it to work, I always ask them, where, under what conditions, what happened, what, when did, what did you key in, where were you in the code? And I try to have them walk me through it step by step by step what they did in order to make it fail because if i can find if i can make it fail myself and i can repeat the problem then it is so much simpler to find out where it's occurring in my code and this same thing goes on in, in real life i know that every time i take my car to my mechanic and i say to him it's making some strange and bizarre noise when i turn really sharp to the left he doesn't just take my word for it he gets in my car and he turns really sharp to the left so that he can hear the noise. Now, of course, as soon as my mechanic gets in the car, it terrifies my car into submission and it doesn't make the strange and bizarre noise. But the idea is that he tries to make it fail, to repeat the problem so that he can find out exactly where it's occurring. Now, I know in your chosen problem, it might not be so easy to make it fail. Let's say, for instance, that your problem is that the world is experiencing a zombie plague. I don't know how you would make that fail or you would repeat that process. So the idea behind making it fail for that would be how can I verify that this really is the problem? Because some of the time we're actually, sometimes we're, we're treating the, the symptoms and not the problem itself. So how can I verify that this actually is indeed the root cause of the problem? Um, are other, other people having it? Is it taking um, or is it occurring in other places? And is this truly the root cause or just a symptom of the problem? So I'd like you to take a few minutes to uh, write down how you would go about making it fail or duplicating the error, or how you would go about verifying that this really is the problem that's occurring and not just a symptom. Rule number six says, I will look before I assume. Many times in a software program, when I find an error, I just make an assumption about what's causing it. So I go to the source code and I slam in some kind of a solution and it really didn't fix the problem because I made an assumption. And so rule number six is I will look before I assume. I'm not going to jump to any assumptions. I'm actually going to make an effort to find out if that truly is the problem before I try to implement a solution. I know that I was writing a program in a language that I had never learned before for a class that I took several years back. And we, they introduced us to something called Free Pascal. And it was an interesting programming language. And I flat out could not get my while loop to work. It just refused to acknowledge my while loop. And I assumed the whole time that there was something with the while loop and I kept rewriting it and retrying it. Ultimately, I found out that Free Pascal was not accepting my nested if statements. And so my initial assumptions were wrong and I wasted a lot of time trying to um, fix it when that was not the problem. When we were writing our um, HTML web pages, one of the problems that we might encounter is that I'm making changes into my text editor and when I save it and refresh my browser, those changes were not being reflected in my browser and I said, Maybe the problem is that your browser is not looking at the same document that you're typing in. And so the solution was to shut them both down and then go back to the original source code file or the HTML file and open it up in the browser and then open it up in a text editor. And it was surprising the number of times that students had somehow managed to save the text file under a different name and the browser was no longer looking at the original file. So looking and verifying that the problem is occurring and where it's occurring before you just make assumptions can save you a whole lot of time and effort. So what I want you to do is write down a few assumptions that people might just jump to if they encountered your problem. So what kind of wrong or bad assumptions might people just jump to? 
write some of those down.